I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. The clapper never gets old, at least for me. It's always funny. No, it... It's always funny, every time. It is pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so... I found something out about myself. Yes. What'd you learn? I want to learn. Tell us. Um, it's just you and me. There, there's not thousands of other people listening right now. Because there's not. There's not actually thousands of other people. There's not tens of thousands of other people listening. Is that cranberry juice? It is. I got it. I got it a couple of weeks back when I thought I had kidney stones. You're nasty. Um, and I've just been drinking it yeah. since. This batch is a little little more tart than usual. A little more tart? I, find, I tend to find it pretty tart. I it, think they put is a, a lot of sugar in it, too. Not not like regular cranberry juice. Okay. They don't add the sugar because cranberries are already very sugary. Yeah. Okay. So you don't really need to give... You don't really need to juice the cranberry juice. Mm, no. Well, they add a lot oh. of sugar to like cranberry sauce. Like thanks, I was looking at recipes the other day for uh, homemade cranberry sauce. So much sugar. Yeah, I'll believe that. I mean, there's a reason why I loved it as a kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I still love it, to be fair. But... So what did you learn about yourself? So I learned that I, uh, even if I have an extra uh, extra two weeks to do something. Oh, no. I still don't finish it until 1 a.m. the night before. No, John. No. No. <laughs> I read a whole, I read a book for this week's episode. Oh, geez. And I was done with the book for the most part. Yeah. Like two weeks ago but i didn't sit uh, down and write it until like yeah thir- until wednesday and then i had a weird day thursday so i didn't actually finish writing it until friday at 1 a.m <laughs> <laughs> oh man i will say i don't have more copies written than normal but i'm less panicked about getting copies written <laughs> That's which is fair. nice yeah. i actually have two more episodes planned I haven't written the copies for them, but they're planned. I've got one done, and I've got one in the works that I want to have done because it's more Halloween adjacent than the other one. Mm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Co- I, I Oh, that yeah. actually reminds me. Yes. Um, I was looking through my bedside, cap, my bedside drawer because I don't look in there that often. Okay. And not only do I have Shadowrun, the RPG in there yes um because i was gonna we were event- i wanted to do a session of shadow I run you had that on your bookshelf i did but i brought it upstairs uh, a long okay. time ago yeah and i've been reading it or trying to read it and by trying to read it that means i never read it okay um <laughs> yeah normal uh but i looked at the rules and i was like this is far too complicated for our role-playing group oh yeah that's entirely possible like i was reading yeah. it and i'm like this is too much. Like, <laughs> it, it's the kind of game that if I was involved in it, and it was just I was the player, and there were additional players, I would have probably been fine with it. Yeah. But if I'm the DM, and I'm DMing people who... You have to... It's one of those games you have to be on board with as well. Yeah, that's true. Like, more so than even D&D. Because D&D more is so? like... Yeah. D and D is like at the very least fairly. Uh, five, fifth edition is actually kind of easy to wrap your head. Five around. is actually yeah yeah that's true. Five is good. I came in. When yeah. did I start? Four e or three point five? I might have started uh, at three point five. We we started a Pathfinder. There's is... no because I played before. You and oh, I played. Oh well, we played with Zach that one time. Yeah too. yeah, I think that was three point five, and uh, mm. I know that was like this is a lot to get into. Yeah, it was. There was only like one session of that, and then it was a weird session of that because he put he pitted us against like a uh, a dragon or something. I don't know. It was weird. There's a dragon. The thing I remember most is uh, was it uh, Mushu? 
Mushu? The bear. Oh, well, that's D20 Modern. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a weird system. That was an incredibly weird system where we had a bear built yeah. armor for the bear. This is like modern. Like This isn't like medieval times. This is like modern times D&D. Yeah. And there was a bear that we built armor and uh, gave it drugs and let it run into a house and kill everybody. So that was a weird. It was a weird game. Yeah. Yeah. We, we uh, it, it did a lot of work. It did. I mean, hey, XP is XP. No matter who you are. I mean, it, like, literally finished, like... Everyone. It killed everyone. everybody. Literally, we put a bear that was on our side into a house and then hid in the cupboards. Or I hid in a cupboard. You did. You did. I kind of made, like, a weird... My character was weird. I don't even remember my character anymore. I don't either. I think it was a she... No, it was a he. It was a he. Like, I got wind powers, and the DM didn't understand how bullshit wind powers are. You went, I, okay, as soon as you said that, I, I remembered, you did some crazy BS. I remember you did some crazy wind-powered BS. I think I had lightning power, and I was like, John's going crazy, I'm going to add to it. And, like, did I added something to your wind, and it was fantastic. We did stuff that we shouldn't have been allowed to do. Especially given the, the period of time that we uh, had been playing in that game. Yeah, I, I I was given way too much leeway, which for me, if I have too much lateral like motion from the campaign, it's not good. It's not good no. for anyone. <laughs> no, it's not. If you let me think about something and plan, like if you let me request my powers and custom build my powers, it's they're not probably good. gonna be bullshit. It's not good. When I do custom stuff, it's reasonable, right? Because I had mm-hmm. the whole Mephistopheles thing going on that I, I was, like, texting you on the table about. And that, that was, was like, still one of my favorite mechanics. Le- it was a legit, like, good mechanic, too. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on, and it wasn't overpowered. And you, you literally you literally became the hand of the DM, just to let you know. Oh, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> when I wanted something to happen. It was yeah. really great, because I could just make it a part of your mission. Yeah, <laughs> it was uh, my secret mission that no other players knew about, and it was great. Yeah, it was actually really fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think I still have that uh, document somewhere laying around. That was a good... I I, I wrote it. up I wrote up a huge thing on that, didn't I? Yeah, it was like a proper like character class. Yeah, I, I wrote up a lot of stuff for that campaign. That yeah. campaign was... Uh, it was good. It was ambitious, to oh, say the least. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, well, there um, were kaiju. Well, because I wanted kaiju. I mean, yeah, that that's was, true. That's just you. That's just me. That's yeah. just me. Um, oh, yeah, the thing I was going to tell you about. So okay. it turns out uh, I have a book of Hudson Valley ghost stories. What? And you just yeah. didn't know about it. Let me let me go grab it real quick. Okay. Go get it. Get it, get it, get it. Boop, 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 boop. He's going to get a book. This is how I feel dead air. Uh, as a pro tip to all the listeners, uh, Applebee's has $1 vampire-themed drinks that come with um, little vampire teeth. Very, very uncomfortable at the uh, the gums, but hey, a dollar is a dollar. So go get lit at Applebee's. Uh, other fun fact is after midnight, Applebee's does get a little bit crazy. So, I mean, I learned that the other night, and hey, look, he's back. So, uh, it's it's like... It's like a fucking... Oh, it's like a real book. It's like a real book. It's... Yeah. I don't remember when I got it. It's published by Schiffer. Okay. Um, But it's like a whole bunch of stuff. I've never actually read it. I bought it one day uh, because I was like, oh, I'll buy this. This looks like something I'll read eventually. Yeah. Guess when the copyright date of this book is. All right. I'm going to say... Because I just looked it up. 2012. 2009. No. <laughs> so you've had that book for a decade. Yeah. Also, look at this. The book is in pristine condition. <laughs> like, I haven't even yeah. really... Cr- I haven't even broken the spine in on this thing yet. Jeez. So, yeah. Oh, I, man. I was, I was thinking about... I, I was thinking of just, like, grabbing a bunch of these stories and doing, like, a ghost story episode. Oh, yeah. You can just do ghost stories. Or even... um. For, like, sponsor stuff? Oh, uh, yeah. The things that we don't do anymore. 
Um, <laughs> like here's the here's the story about the Kingston steeple. Oh, okay. There's a, there's I didn't know there was anything about that. Like, oh, you didn't know that? There's a demon. Oh, there's, there's a, a demon, demon in that the lives. Church? Okay. There's a demon that lives in the in the steeple. Yeah. Um because he was being a tricky boy. He was and... being a tr- okay, he was being a tricky boy. Well, actually yeah. I I still remember this story because it was going to be an episode. Yeah. Um but there's literally the what I'm about to tell you is the entire story. There's nothing else to it. Okay. So as the legend goes, a demon was accosting a sailing ship on the Hudson. I believe it was the Hudson. Uh, that makes which sense. Is, I mean, that's our is, valley. Yeah, and it's close to it's close to Kingston. And our yeah. river. And our river, yeah. yeah. Um, and as he's accosting the captain, it's during a storm, he steals the captain's hat. Okay. Um, he takes the hat, and he flies over to nearby Kingston. He drops the hat on the highest steeple in, in, the, in the town. And as he's dropping the hat on top of the steeple, he accidentally touches the steeple. Okay. Which, because of the holy energy of the church. Oh, that's you've got yourself a horny demon. That's what you've got right there. It sucks him into the, the steeple no. where he <laughs> remains to this day. Oh, so there's just a hat demon in the steeple down the street. There's steep. a hat there's a hat demon. <laughs> um also okay. I think the, the clock originally had a thirteen on it instead of a twelve. A lot of them do. Yeah. Really? Like, yeah, that's super common. That's the way they used to make clocks. And then people forgot that's the way they used to make clocks. And uh, oh. now everyone's like, oh, that's a thing. Yeah. Uh, that actually makes a lot of sense because it's both, you know. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me now. Yeah. So that. But yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's the ghost story there. There's also catacombs underneath all of like Uptown Kingston. So just remember that. Next oh, I'm well aware. There. So Kingston is yeah. the original capital, yep. and we had like a fortress and all that. But um, in the stockade district, like uh, again, my I'll get confirmation. Like, like uh, I'm trying to talk so much, so many words. My sister works in the stockade district. Those mm-hmm. businesses are connected by underground tunnels, which is where all, all they just keep their dumpsters. Is that really it? That's why you don't see garbage around in Uptown. Because it's oh my God. all in the underground tunnels. Oh, my God. And they just put it out on pickup day. <gasps> that makes so much sense. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I have literally never thought of that. And that's why all the bars keep their ice in the basement because they're just, you've got a Colder. tunnel. What else are you going to do with it? Keep all the stuff you don't want people to see. Garbage yeah. and ice. I mean, that's what tunnels are for. Yeah. Quite frankly. Um, all right. I think we can start this episode. Okay. I've made enough jokes and talked about my... Oh, Chrome just crashed. Oh, uh, okay. All right, give me a second. I gotta You've got it. Chrome. <laughs> I haven't had that happen in a very long time. It happens to me more often than I would like, and that's partially because I usually... So for my job, I open like 50 tabs at a time. Oh, okay. Um. So yeah, let's see. My drive is opening... Open up my research folder. Ready for broadcast. Broadcasted. Mo. All right, here we go. Okay. So, uh, this is Cryptopedia. I was just gonna say we should probably do an intro at some point. <laughs> yeah, I I always forget about that. Brandon is the one who write who copies the thing from the website down. I don't copy it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because that's just a part of the shtick now. Yeah, and I a part of me feels like if I if I start doing that, it'll just be you'll be encroaching on my territory by giving an intro. Yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be breaking into your bit, and you know my bit is I honestly don't know what I'm doing half the time. So I mean that's um, not a bit. No, it's not. It's really it's, not a bit. And that's not me throwing shade. Half the time is a really good ratio. <laughs> yeah, I it's not a bit at all. Yeah. Um. So, this... Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm John. I'm Brandon. We talk about monsters and uh, folklore and uh, the paranormal and stuff like that. Yeah, we do. We do that. Yeah. We also talk about uh, uh, stuff that doesn't have anything to do with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, well, that's how we always... Like, we'll talk yeah. about 
books. We'll which talk about Magic the Gathering. I remind talked me, about vampire teeth while you were gone. Oh, you did? Yeah. Those those are f- those are terrifying looking. By the way, they looked gnarly. They uh, hurt the gums. I'll believe that. Yeah, very uncomfortable. But um, if you have one dollar drinks that come with vampire teeth, well, you're gonna, gonna end up with store. everybody wearing vampire teeth. <laughs> you are. You are. Yeah. Um. Oh, geez, I lost the train of thought. Anywho, um. So this week's monster. Yes. Was first sighted in, I'm going to amend that, 1971. Ooh, okay, somewhat recent. It was humanoid in appearance. All right. And it's from, and now, get ready, Louisiana, Missouri. (laughs) All right, so we got Missouri in the 1970s. There's going to be... Oh, weird stuff going on. What's Missouri known for? Um, oh, there's one other thing. Yeah. Um, if you search for the name of this creature, uh, you don't get the creature itself. You get a hoax. Oh, okay. So there's a name of the creature challenge, and it's an urban legend Okay. that resulted in... Uh, Suppose so. Basically, here's the Wikipedia thing. It was reported that children and adolescents were being enticed by a user named Monster Name to perform a series of dangerous tasks, including violent attacks, self harm, and suicide. Wait, uh, in 1970s? 19. And this is 2018. Oh, in 2018. Okay, that's the Momo Challenge. That's the Momo Challenge. Did yeah. you look it up? Which no, I didn't look it up. I'm just aware of that. And here's yeah. the other thing. One Momo Challenge, stupid, never was actually a thing. Also, yeah. it was a spooky-looking art piece by, I forget the artist's name. Yeah. And uh, I want to say it was China or Japan. But the government made the artist destroy their art piece. Uh, that's fair. It, it's an unsettling thing. Um, I like unsettling things. So the, uh, oh, uh, uh, my one of my favorite um, paintings of all time is One Day You Will No Longer Be Loved by the Chapman Brothers. So look that up. And, One uh, day you will no. <laughs> here's the part where everyone hears us Google. Oh, wait a second. Is this it? And, uh, yeah, you probably found It's the one It's like it's, a lady. It's like a it's lady a... holding a thing on her cheek or something. She's not holding a thing on her cheek. It's a little kid with, like, a white, um, holding, like, oh, a wait. bag of popcorn. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's more than one. There's more than one. Yeah. It's a, it's a series of paintings. Yeah, okay. I like the one where it's like a kid holding a bag of popcorn. Oh, this is like the Google the Google uh, AI thing. There's... Like, oh, this did is... Google make the rest of them? That's the actual one that, that I just sent you. That's okay. like a painting that I just love, and I don't know why. I mean, it's, it's a juxtaposition of... Um... It's a juxtaposition of like, of what's the word I'm looking for, um, like <sighs> pure and decayed. Yeah. Right. So it's 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 it represents the the like duality of nature where you start you start looking like the girl, and then you end looking like the girl. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just good. No, I, I don't I, even know I, how I they got it. that effect on the face. I mean, nobody else can see this. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'll yeah. try and uh, I'll try and put a picture, like a link to it in the okay. show notes if I if I remember. Um, <laughs> which, let's be real, that's a <laughs> that's a tenuous uh, reality. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's not that though. It's not the Momo challenge. Okay, it's a, it's it the, is, the Momo monster, which I Momo don't know monster. what it is. Yeah, so here's the thing about that. I've been trying to do this monster since literally we started doing the podcast. Oh, really? Um, okay. And I didn't realize, like, every time I would Google it, I would get that Momo challenge thing. So I started to, like, really resent that creature, that, like, weird piece of art. Oh, <laughs> as a result. do you? Yeah, but um, 
I did end up finding a book about it that was released this year. Ooh, okay. Which is nice. why we're doing this episode, because all the sources are coming from that book, which is Momo, The Strange Case of the Missouri Monster by Lyle Blackburn. All right, um, Lyle. What's up, Lyle? Yeah, that's the primary source for this episode, and actually the main source, because uh, he does a pretty good breakdown of it. Okay. So I'm going to just, I'm going to defer to him on yeah. a lot of the stuff. Um, although I don't agree with some of his conclusions, but we'll get to those. Um, one second. So it, it, like, as always, if you're enjoying the content of this episode, be sure to check out the source and it should be. And yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so this takes place in Louisiana, Missouri. (laughs) So Momo is just a hippie that likes uh, to eat rabbits. Ah, that's a dog. Oh, just a hippie that likes to eat dogs. Kind of. All right. Well, there's a lot of there's. This is a weird story, and we're we're gonna get into it. I I kind of as I was writing it last night, I was like, I hit a point where I'm just like, <laughs> that's how. How does this keep going? It was one of the. It's one of those stories where it's like, what? Like Wh- they're like, what? It's still happening. No, it's done. No, I meant, like, in your head. Like, that's where you're like, this is still going on, this story. Not as in modern day, but, like, still continuing. Well, it's, no, no, I don't think it's still continuing. Um, But the the length of this story was, like, it it happens over uh, the span of, like, a couple weeks. But there's constant activity happening. Yeah. And it's all, like, the same thing. Oh, so, geez. but before before I get into that too much, let's uh let's take a trip. Okay, where are we gonna go? Uh, Louisiana, Missouri. Okay. So it was founded in 1816. Nice. And it was founded by John Walter Bays and named for his daughter. His daughter's now, name was Louisiana. Yes. Yeah. Here's the other thing. Yeah. This is after Louisiana was a state. Oh, so he was just aware. Yeah, it was four years after Louisiana was was made a state. Yeah, this... I mean, my daughter's name is North Dakota, so that's not weird. It is. It is weird. That would be weird. Is it? That would be weird. Yeah, a little bit. Just, just, a, just, just a tit. Okay. Um, the town, as with a lot of like towns on the Missouri River, uh, Mississippi River. Um, was a profitable shipping port, and has now uh, has has. Uh, this is what happens when I don't read the script and I like, like. But you paraphrase wrote it. it. I wrote it. Yeah, I'm paraphrasing what I wrote because I don't like what I wrote. Okay. Because <laughs> that's that's the level of that's the level of like self loathing that is exists in my mind. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> um. So. It now has a converted ammonia plant, which serves as a research facility for synthetic fuels, which is pretty cool. As of the 2010 census, the town population was 3,364 people, which surprisingly is pretty close to the 1970 numbers of 4,533. So, um, not that big of a variation, to be honest. Yeah, not really. I mean, a thousand people were like, eh, this ain't for me. Yeah, like... I mean, it's probably all elderly now, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, another interesting point that I found on the Wikipedia is that it's called the most intact Victorian streetscape streetscape in the state of Missouri. Which okay. uh, the picture of <laughs> the picture of Louisiana, Missouri doesn't make that sound doesn't make that look impressive at all. No. I'm looking at it, and... It, um, it kind of reminds me of Uptown a few years back. <laughs> Except for, like, that looks like there should be a tumbleweed in the middle somewhere. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. It really does. It's a very wide street. Which I appreciate. Yeah, I do, too. Um, Although it doesn't look like they have much street parking, so... No, it doesn't look like they have Which, much of anything. anything. Yeah. No, no. I actually approve of places that don't allow street parking. There's, um, I'm fine with that. I hate it. I, I I'm not gonna lie. The other day, I finally realized why I like the avenues on, um, 
in, in New York City, and that's because there's no street parking. Oh, uh, okay. Like, Fifth Avenue, I don't think, has street parking anywhere. Yeah. And I think that's why huh. I like I like to see them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> this this whole story kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, a... You could, you could make a horror movie about this, and actually... Um, there is like a horror mocum- there's like a documentary horror thing that exists out there. Okay. Uh, it's called Momo Small Town Monster, I think. One second, I want to look that up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Momo the Missouri Monster. It was only available on DVD. Yeah. So I didn't watch it because I don't want to. I don't want to add a DVD to my collection of Momo the Monster. Yeah. Um, also, because the the like, uh, it, it's doing this thing where they're pretending that it's like real, but it's not. So like, yeah. here's a here's a link to the to the the documentary um, where they're like faking they're faking actual footage of a monster, which I, I get where they're coming from, and it's interesting, <clears throat> but at the same time, it it's yeah. Oh jeez. <laughs> yeah. I always I always feel a little worried when stuff like that happens cuz like I think that people are going to misinterpret that as being like an actual yeah. actual footage cuz there has been cases where that happens like just watch oh, Captain yeah. Disillusion. <laughs> right? Yes. So let's go to uh the summer of 1971. Now, on a fateful summer day, On scenic Highway 79, just north of Louisiana, Missouri, two women stopped to have a picnic at a small turnout. Uh, Joan Millis, Joan, no, that's Joan Mills. I can't read my own, my own typing. uh, And Mary Ryan were eating their meal when they began to smell a putrid odor. Joan would be the first to spot the primate-like creature in the thicket at the edge of the turnout. Mary would later describe the creature as follows. It had hair all over the body as if it was an ape, yet the face was definitely human. It was more like a hairy human. The arms were partially colored, covered with hair, but the but the hair, the hands and palms were hairless. Man, I burped in the middle of that. <laughs> um, we had plenty of time to see this. The pair fled to the car, locked themselves in, when Joan realized that in the panic, she had left her keys on the table in her purse. The creature approached the car and placed its hands on the hood of the car when Joan accidentally honked the horn and spooked the creature. Now, I don't know why it was an accident, because my my initial response to a situation like that would be honk the horn, scare the thing away. It sounds a lot like they saw my neighbor when he mows his lawn in the summer with that his shirt on. <laughs> it's like, man, what's that guy doing wearing a sweater in the middle of August? I mean, to be fair, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. Um yeah. Although I probably would never wear I would never go outside shirtless because I'm too self-conscious of my yeah. hair. <laughs> um apparently, however, this was not enough to scare off the creature, which then examined their picnic and even ate some of the food. Leisurely, it disappeared into the woods, at which point Joan retrieved her purse and the duo continued to St. Louis, which is where they were heading in the first place. Did it leave place. a tip at least? No, no, unfortunately uh, not. Dine and Dash, I hate that. Yeah, it report. They reported the creature to the Missouri State Highway Patrol, and by some, this is considered to be the first instance of Momo or the Missouri Monster. Okay. Now, if any of this sounds familiar, <laughs> this is nearly the Bigfoot scene from a Goofy movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Which- if you'll remember, uh, Max and Goofy get locked in their car without the keys. I don't uh, remember because I didn't see the Goofy movie. You didn't see a Goofy movie? Okay. So I've linked it to the start where the where the scene starts. Yeah. Right now they're it's fishing a with scene. a steak. Yeah. And basically, um, they did. So yeah, Bigfoot does make an appearance in a Disney property. Um. I, I very, very much remember this from when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, because this scene is just, like, completely ridiculous. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Um. <sighs> like, <laughs> Goofy even makes a joke about Bigfoot being out of focus. 
He's, you know, well, he's got the video camera. He's fishing yeah. for a steak. He's chasing him in the car. Yeah. The the Goofy movie was a really, really strange movie. There's, I can believe it. Oh, now Bigfoot's got their keys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This so, is actually what you were describing, isn't it? This is, this is eating, almost a, Yeah. Yep, yep. So, yeah, it's super duper... <laughs> It's super duper Momo. I don't know if I don't know if this was inspired by Momo because it's it's a com- it's a comical situation that you could that really fits Goofy well. Yeah. Uh but I want to believe that Momo inspired this scene. Do you you so, can go ahead, believe it. Yeah, I don't know if it's true, but that's my yeah. personal X-files belief. X-files it. I want to believe. Yeah. Just X-files so, it. Momo doesn't appear for a year. Okay. July 11th, 1972, on Marzolf Hill, which is going to be where most of the remainder of this takes place. It's a hill outside of Louisiana, uh, Louisiana, Missouri, which I have to say Louisiana, Louisiana, Missouri every single time. Because if I say Louisiana, you think I'm talking about the state. Yeah. Like, ugh, such a bad name. I'm sorry. If you live in Louisiana, Missouri, don't, like... Complain to me about the fact that, oh, no, it makes total sense. It might make sense to you because you live there. But to me, it confuses the living fuck out of me. That's true. Also, nobody ever thinks of Missouri. So, no. like, yeah, there's no reason yeah. why anyone would think, like, oh, do you mean the one in Missouri or the actual state? No, no. one would ever have that thought. No, and it, it drives me up the wall. So, about a year later... Terry Harrison, age eight, and his brother, Wally Harrison, age five, had been playing in their backyard on Marzoff Hill in Louisiana, Missouri. The pair heard a low growl to see... I I wrote this. Okay. The pair heard a low growl... growl uh. <laughs> the pair hold a, heard a roll doll. No. <laughs> that's an author. The pair, the pair heard a giant. No, no, that's what he writes about. Willy Wonka showed up. Yeah. <laughs> so Willy Wonka showed up and they saw a large creature standing about 15 feet away. The creature was bipedal, covered in black hair, which obscured the face, and had no neck with a pumpkin sized head, which is a weird metric. Yeah, that's true. I think. Um, How tall was it again? 15 feet away? Okay, so that'd be a large head. I, well, it depends what kind of pumpkin you're talking about. Yeah, that's the thing. I just bought a pumpkin and it's like this big. Yeah. So. I'm pretty sure that the book said pumpkin size and I didn't write pumpkin shape down because I remember making a note of it. Okay. Um, but still very weird. It also had a putrid odor, was coated in red blood like splatters and was carrying what appeared to be a dead dog. Oh, okay. Which is why the picture at the top has a dead dog in it. Gotcha. That makes sense now. So Terry fled, and bef- I, before I like really read what what the whole story went down as, I was like, "Yeah, that's some big brother instinct right there." Yeah. <laughs> uh, with his younger brother close behind. Oh yes, yep, yeah, yeah. You just have to be faster than the other guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's a big brother move right there. Uh, into the house, alerting their sister Doris, who was fifteen at the time, who looked out the window to see the creature as it turned and ran into the woods. Uh, Doris called her mother Betty, which I want to say, hey, it's a cryptid story where the wife is named. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a rare. That is actually rare. Rare. Yeah. Super rare. Uh, at work and locked the doors. So, you know, she's showing at least some uh, some competence outside yes. of the typical horror movie genre. Oh, yeah, where you leave the front door wide open and hide under the coffee table in the living room where you're clearly visible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You'll never get caught, ever. No. Actually, talking about that, that reminded me of something. There was a... I was playing hide-and-seek with a child uh, yesterday Mm -hmm. uh, who hid in my house behind a cabinet that was made fully of glass. Was hiding behind glass. Hey... Maybe they thought they were just John Cena. Maybe. <laughs> but it's like, I just walked down, I was like, really? This is, that's your spot? Just the glass cabinet? I mean, <laughs> it's where I keep my playing card collection, so maybe a deck of cards might obscure you. <laughs> like, 
You might get lucky. Yeah. Like, I just fell down laughing when I saw that. That's pretty good. That's yeah. a pretty good one. <laughs> so 30 minutes later, Edgar shows up, which is their father. Yeah. Um, Not a cow underneath a, you know, someone's house or something like that. Um. And, you know, I'm assuming that they were all hiding, apparently behind glass cabinets, because that's what kids do. Yeah. Uh, he, he arrives home. So after calming the children and presumably telling them don't hide in glass cabinets, uh, Edgar began to examine the area. He found an area of fat, uh, flattened bush, brush. Words. Fat, fattened bush is a, is a word. Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm imagining, now I love Stan Bush. I've met him in person. I've shook his hand. Uh I've gotten an autograph from him. But now I'm imagining Stan Bush, but fat. (laughs) Yes. Um, That's all. So so he finds an area of flattened brush about 50 feet away from the house, along with faint footprints in the dust, along with black hairs around them. Despite being covered in blood, uh, based on the account of the kids, Edgar was unable to find any blood. In light of this... And honestly, probably being way too trusting of the kids, uh, mm-hmm. Edgar contemplated that the dog-like creature it had been carrying was its offspring, which is oh. a leap of logic, to say the least. That's a major leap. Yeah. Um, around 1.30 a.m. that night, Edgar heard a popping of brush as if something were running through the woods. Okay. At this point, Edgar began to gather a neighborhood posse oh, to I love look me for a the good creature. Posse. Uh, for that night and ate the next. Naturally, nothing happened because of these hunts. However, as I'll call it, Momomania was just starting. Okay. Copyright, 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 TM, 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 Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, that's going to do a lot of good for a crypt that's not seen anymore. So, you know. <laughs> so... On July 14th, the Harrisons, who had been... Wo- hey, uh, man, I'm getting way ahead of myself in my speech. Yeah. So it's like I'm saying three words ahead while I'm saying an old word. Apparently, oh, yeah. apparently, taking a break from reading things out loud has decayed my ability to read things out loud. <laughs> it's not even that like it's that much of a break. No, it's not. That's the thing that's killing me. So, on July 14th, the Harrisons had been hosting a weekly prayer meeting with 30 members in attendance. Okay. Around 9 p.m., when only 12 guests were present, they saw balls of light moving across the trees in the nearby, uh, like, like their neighbor's house. Yeah. Um, later that same night, they heard a low growl, and promptly, they left the house. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in the they're in Louisiana, uh, Missouri. There's definitely no chance of growls. Um, so as they left the house, they saw a crowd of people, some with guns, coming towards the house <laughs> to take care of the mysterious sound. Yes. which somehow all of them heard. Okay, I love me a good gun wielding posse. There's yeah, it's nothing pretty good. Better. You've got. I mean, I'd at least observe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From no, a distance. I mean. I mean, we're three days into this 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 event, basically. So obviously, you got to bring guns. Obviously, um, the police were called that night, and Edgar explored the woods with neighbors with the neighbors after they had left. Uh, the the police that is finding a rotted house which had a moldy horse or garbage smell. Uh, I know garbage smells. I've never. I've. I know lots of horses. I've well not. Like, I've known and been around many horses. Mm-hmm. I don't know what a moldy horse smell is. Do they mean, like, is that, like, the equivalent of wet dog? Like, wet horse? I think it was the I think it was moldy, and it's either garbage or horse. But I gotta say, I've been around both as well. Horse is a very different scent profile than garbage. Yes. Very different. Explicitly different. Yeah, yeah. So, I I don't know. Fearful of their home, the Harrisons moved into the family restaurant in town where they would stay until news changed on the creature. Now, I was a little bit confused by this because I think that Edgar Harrison worked for the, uh, like, like, 
Louisiana Waterworks. Okay. Um, so I assume maybe the wife Betty owned the restaurant or something along those lines, but I yeah. couldn't find I couldn't find concrete explanation for like why they had a family restaurant or anything okay. like that. Okay. So, um, but yeah. So at this point in the story, it begins to have shades of the Mad Gasser, which was episode oh, forty four. Nice. And also the Monkey Man of New Delhi, which I don't I forgot to take down the episode number. Okay. Um as the stories of the creature spread through the through word of mouth and headlines, um, like people started to freak out more, right? Growls and sightings of the humanoid creatures in the woods, um, most of them being identical to the first sighting, uh, just like really exploded, right? Yes. So like everyone's like, oh, I heard a growl. Oh, I saw a humanoid in the woods. Oh, I heard a growl. I heard a growl too. Yeah. Huh. Oh, ah. Everyone starts to, to freak out. So, really, I'm just going to skip all that, and I'm not going to rattle off a bunch of names, because, like, literally the rest of this episode could just be me saying, like, just oh, uh, Mary Sue Ellen saw X, or Bobby Hill saw Y. <laughs> all right, so Monkey Man of New Delhi was episode 37. Took me a second to find it, because the episode uh, title was Danny DeVito on Bath Salts. That's true. Yeah. Now, now there should be a Monkey Man... After the the Danny DeVito on bath salts, but yeah, it was Danny DeVito on death, bath salts. So, um, in direct contrast to, was it the Monkey Man of New Delhi where they freaked everyone out? I think it was the Monkey Man of New Delhi. Yeah, they also yeah. had posse's and like government mandated curfews and shit. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was ridiculous. Yeah. So in this case, uh, Police Chief Ward needed to weigh in the situation similarly. Um, despite being skeptical, he recognized that the belief in the creature was resulting in an increasingly dangerous situation. Oh, which, this is very similar tones then, yeah. Yeah. So, there is something out there, and it has the people of this town scared to death. I get about ten calls a night about it from good, reliable citizens. I've been trying to convince people that it's a bear or a practical joker in a gorilla costume, costume but I'll have to admit it could be something else. The more I keep hearing about it from people, the more difficult it is for me to be skeptical. Now, um, that being said, I, I don't think he's coming out and saying, yeah, it's a Bigfoot. I think he's coming out and saying, people are scared. Yeah. And that's the important thing. Yeah. Right? Uh, and in situations like this, where it's the like mass hysteria type situation and mm -hmm. everyone's panicking... Um, the fear of the possibility of there being something unknown is the dangerous part. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Even if the thing was real, it would still be less dangerous than the danger imposed by mob mentality. So due to mounting concerns, a search was organized with 20 men for July 19th by chief ward. However, this being rural Missouri, the search did have some difficulty in the form of landowners who weren't compliant. Oh, I believe it. So, ultimately, no creature was found as a result of the search, nor was any of the trace of the creature found. So, like, no bones, no... No uh, bones, no... Fur, no, no footprints, gotcha. no nothing. Um, the cynic in me wonders that if this was perpetrated by hoaxers, maybe they may have avoided trying to uh, tip off the fact that they were hoaxing to a potentially punitive uh, police chief. Yeah. So that's just that's me being um, cynical. Uh -huh. The other option could be that literally they just didn't find it. I mean, absence of evidence is not ev evidence of absence, uh -huh. which I think is from uh, the boondocks. I'm not going to uh, uh, try to correct you on that because I don't know. That's also I couldn't believe it when you told me that Cannon Busters and the boondocks had the same guy. Oh, yeah, no, it's wild. That's, yeah, it's so good. I still haven't finished it, though. You didn't finish it? Okay. No, I didn't finish it. I, I've been working on it, but it's one of those things I keep, I got, so I got super into Steven Universe. Which, okay. I got super into Steven Universe. Um, I don't judge. You're judging. It's really good. Yeah. I recommend it. It made me almost cry on multiple occasions. There's... Um. I just finished Demon Slayer Kometo no Yaiba, and it was yeah. so good. I, I like the episode where they're like, uh, so how much budget do you need? All of it. Which? Because that's that that was that was the episode um, 
Well, I guess Demon Slayer spoilers. That was the episode where um, Tanjiro's song played, and he did like the really crazy fire dance. <gasps> oh yes, yeah. yeah. Combined, that was so. That was so dope. That yeah, that was very good. That scene alone is worth the whole series. And then I just want there to be more because it was literally that episode, and then the next five episodes are just training. Which yeah, but I appreciate training, but after a while, I was like. I want to see you fight a demon. Well, the real reason that the next five episodes of training is because they have to introduce all the characters who are going to be important for the remainder of the series. They didn't even tr- introduce it. Like, there was, like, the, the 12... Um, the 12 uh, pillars. Tw- not the 12... Uh, Hirashi, was it? Or whatever they call them. It, it translates to pillars. Okay, there are the 12 pillars, like, during Hashrin his trial at first. Yeah. And then they're just gone for several episodes. And then well, when he goes back out into the world, they're like... You should talk to Fireman because you can do fire stuff. Now you have your total concentration breathing where you can do it all day. And uh, it's still good. I'm not complaining, even though it sounds like I am. Be- well, there's a movie. A there is a movie coming. There's a movie oh, coming. That's going to be dope. It's going to be the train bit. Ah, uh, okay. They're going to they're gonna do the train arc on the movie. Okay. Which is pretty cool. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. So it's basically going to be Snowpiercer with demons. Which oh, I'm excited now. That's going to be yeah. so good. So, <laughs> getting back to the Momo monster, uh, <laughs> the search was criticized by one witness of the creature, Maxine Minor, who believed that the search should have occurred in the dark. Mm. Because they've only seen the creature in the dark. I mean, yeah, I guess that, that makes sense, yeah. But does it really? Because... Right, so she's positing that it's potentially a nocturnal creature, so I search for something that's nocturnal when it may not be active. But here's the thing. You'd find evidence of it. That's true. That's that's the other thing. You'll still find evidence of deer. You'll still find evidence of coyotes. You'll still find evidence of foxes. Yeah. You might not find them, but you'll find the the evidence that they were there. I and still something, think it's just a hippie. They're looking for a hippie. Right? That's possible. The smell of garbage they're talking about is patchouli. I actually don't think patchouli smells like garbage. I hate it so much. Really? There was a lady when I worked at the farm stand who wore so much, customers would complain. Like, she would, like, all the well, time. Cause it stinked the whole, legit the whole bit, like, not hyperbole, there, there, the whole building. We there would, is. We would put up a fan and open the front doors and back doors to get airflow. They could smell it from inside the bakery. So, I will admit, I will admit, there is such a thing as too much patchouli. I will concede this point. Like, any amount, though. Or maybe I, I, just the one lady ruined it for me forever. It, I is, think that one lady yeah. ruined it for you. I think yeah. I think anything to the point that you have to literally air out a a farm stand yeah. is probably enough to kill something for you. Like, nobody ever complained about the guy who got manure for a living. Like, so, like, it'd be all on his boots and stuff. Not mm-hmm. one person ever complained about Dookie Man, but everybody complained about Patchouli Lady. Well, I think you can. I think you can like rationalize Dookie Man at a farm stand. That's true. Like, I think your brain. I think I legitimately think that your brain can be like, oh, okay, I'll write that smell out. Yeah, Dookie Man was also in and out. Dookie Man was like, I'm gonna get this specific muffin and this specific coffee every day. Patchouli yeah. Lady was random show ups, and she just linger. She'd let it linger. Yeah. Let it linger. Um, so regardless, large groups of people continued to hear the creature on Mars off Hill, with many bringing firearms. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So on uh, oh, July 20th... Hopefully nobody is also hairy and gets spotted through the trees. <laughs> it's getting close to that point. <laughs> um, so on July 20th, uh, Richard Crow from the Irish Times in Chicago and Fate Magazine arrived to cover the story. Crow and an attorney, Lauren Smith, went to Harrison's home to investigate. When they met Edgar, Doris, and her boyfriend, whose name I forgot to to write down. I think it was like literal. Can it was I like Richard or stop something. you for a moment? So I noticed that the uh, bolded parts uh-huh. uh, have now become... Because before there, it was like whatever Marzoff Hill, uh-huh. whatever the prologue. Mm-hmm. Now... Now you're quoting Blaze Blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. the Wheel of Fate and Turn. And I'm not going to spoil what's coming up, but I see uh, Old Man Jenkins. 
Yeah. Uh, it's another uh, very bolded thing. So you went from descriptors, at least from what I could tell, to just things that you enjoy. Uh, I think this hit this. I hit this point when it was midnight. Okay. So let's just leave it with. Let's just let's just keep that as a. <laughs> yeah, I started to get a little loopy while writing this because it was about this point that I was just kind of like, this story just goes on and on. So this, I was literally testing you that I'm surprised that people get hammered in an Applebee's. Like you were, this is what you were writing while yep. I was doing that. Oh yep. God! This is what I was writing while you were telling me about getting, people getting hammered in an Applebee's. Yeah, I had a drunk guy explain how the lottery works. Like just is just to me. <laughs> like wait, how, like okay. So was at he... the bar at Applebee's, yeah, they have big containers of uh-huh. essentially lottery tickets where you can okay. pick your own numbers and a TV monitor. That does the numbers, and it goes every three minutes. It goes through a new round of numbers. So he was explaining how, because I like he was playing the entire time I was there. He won like a hundred and eighty dollars or something, just oh there. But like you can just play New York State Lottery at the Applebee's bar. So I actually, so you you used to be able to do that uh, uh, hobo on the hill. Okay, I didn't know that. You used to be able to do that too. I remember that. Cause what was it like the blue thing where there's like a, a like a lotter like a bingo chip that like is animated onto the screen on or the screen like that? it was acorns because it's fall time but yeah 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 no that's <laughs> oh god state sponsored gambling is weird yeah it's really weird it's really uh it it always has kind of been upsetting to me in a way it's I feel like it's dangerous to have at a bar. Like, he was yes. up, but he was just like, <laughs> there was a point when he was like, I won shots for everybody. <laughs> that's like, yeah, that's what? dangerous. <laughs> that's that's super dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> don't give drunk people more money. Yeah, don't. Yeah. Like, that's a rule. Just, 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 just don't give drunk people more money. Yeah. I mean, luckily, there's not crazy, like, payouts on that one. No, well, because like, it's. You can it, win a few thousand at most, I think. Yeah, it's it's designed to be something that sucks suckers people in. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, I have a lot that I could say about that from a, a game design standpoint in predatory design and all that stuff, but we're gonna not we're not gonna cover that okay. on this this podcast. <laughs> um, okay. So around nine thirty p.m. is when they reach the Harrison residence, yeah. where, as I said before, Edgar Doris and her boyfriend are present. The group examined the circle from the first night, then visited the an old garbage dump, which it, the fact that there's an old garbage dump close enough to where all these settings is happening might explain the garbage smell. Yeah. Um, this oh, dump, maybe it's just a guy trying to get steal free stuff from the dump. Maybe. Because I hundred percent know people that do that. Yeah. No, that's that's literally how the antique shop in uh, Accord works. Oh, is <laughs> yeah. So is legit, just straight up garbage. Yes, because no, no joke. I was in there one day, like this is years ago, and they're like, "Yeah, I just got back from the dump." Like one of the employees was talking to the like manager, yeah. and I'm like, "What?" Because <laughs> you know how the dump has like all that free that free junk section, yeah. Like or the the what is it transfer station? I guess it's called. Yeah, I guess they were going to the transfer station and just taking all the free stuff. That's okay. Yeah, so... Yeah. I mean, their profit margins are pretty good. Their profit (laughs) margins are pretty good. I am not going to say a thing that I almost said. (laughs) Now I'm curious. And I'll tell you off air. (laughs) All right, that's fine. (laughs) So, uh... The dump had recently been deserved, and for whatever reason, there were two dog graves in the area. Oh, was not expecting that turn. Yeah, I I don't know. And not only that, but they had been dug up and the bones scattered. Like, why are there two dog graves next to a dump? That's where, well, I mean, if you go to my parents' backyard, you'll see uh, some dog graves next to a junkyard. That's true. That's true. Regardless, it, it... 
it's just such like uh, when I was reading it at the time, I'm like, what? Yeah, that's pretty weird. It's it could very also strange. be if there were, like maybe a bear dug up the grave because you don't you're not going Bears... to fall six foot on a dog. No, you're not. Uh, there's a lot of things that could dig up a dog grave. Yeah. That are explainable as not Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. So, continue and explore. And yes, it does appear that they are exploring in the dark. In Missouri woods. Near a dump. That's how you get tetanus. That's just how you get tetanus. That's just tetanus. The whole search party. So, they found a 10-inch by 5-inch footprint and a 5-inch long handprint, which curves slightly. Um, the group estimated the creature to be about 200 pounds. Now, keep in mind, uh, it's a seven-foot creature. It's a seven-foot creature, which isn't crazy tall, but also 10-inch by 5-inch doesn't sound like an abnormally large foot to me. No, no. And also 200 pounds for a creature that they're describing. It's skinny. Yeah, it, it's like a freaking hipster. I think that might actually be... I'm looking at my foot. I was looking for a tape measure. I don't have a tape measure in the room, but I mean, I they might be I describing think, my feet and I think they're wait, one sec. I got a I got a I got a ruler right here. I think Let's that's see. normal foot size. I'm pretty sure it's normal foot size. You know what? This is useless because it doesn't have uh numbers on it. You <laughs> why do you have a ruler with no numbers? Cuz it's a it's like a hanger. Oh, okay. So it's like it's got regular gradations and all that stuff. Oh, my multi tool's got a ruler on it. Are you Let's... gonna multi tool your fuck? <sighs> yeah, yeah. I gotta figure out where the uh, number one is. He's working. Wait, multi. Oh, your multi tool. Okay. Yeah. I, I, for whatever reason, I thought you had a set of calipers. I'm like, what? But no, I'm not gonna take calipers to my feet. Yeah, so five inches wide and. Um... Seven, nine and a half inches uh, long. So, yeah. yeah, that's like a normal, normal human foot. foot size. Yeah. Um, and I was also used to be 30 pounds heavier than this creature. Yeah. So I, I find it and you're short and you're shorter than this creature. And I'm shorter. Yeah. yeah. I'm like yeah. six, one, uh, six, three. If I walk out of a uh, different bank, I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh God. So I'm pretty sure that the, uh, what is it? The, the cube square law. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I, the I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this, this is not how that works, but no, we'll just, we'll move on. We'll move on. So stills not satisfied in their nightly romp. They then explored the abandoned shack from before, which had a pile of leaves and debris in the corner, which was theorized by them to be a sleeping nest. Um, and an overwhelming stench that could only be described as resembling rotten flesh or foul, stagnant water. Once again, two very different smells. Yes, I've smelled both, and they are very different. Yeah. Um, the, the reporter and lawyer would stay at the residence until 3 a.m. Now, um, sightings continue. There's one by a man named Ellis Minor, although, like, in the book, they, they make, it's like three pages they devote to it, but really it's just, I saw something. It was a humanoid. Yeah. And then most of it's just people saying, oh, yeah, he's a trustworthy dude, yada, 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 he's an old guy, ba 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 Um, not really super interesting to me. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, the weirdness factor, however, ratchets up on the night of July 29th. When things take a Scooby-Doo turn. Nice. Uh, as it's, you know, Halloween and, you know, Scooby facts have to be a thing. Scooby facts for Scooby snacks. I'll get them. Listen. Okay. Stop for a second. Yeah. There is a there is a graham cracker. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. The Scooby snack graham cracker. Yeah. Is delicious. I can. Yes. It is You're so correct. good. I'm not going to argue. There's, I will. There's no I will argument. do. I will do dangerous things for a Scooby snack. Yeah. Yeah. Would or you? Uh, I won't do anything for a Klondike bar though. Would you ride your bike with no handlebars? No, handlebars? no handlebars. No handlebars. Yes. 
Uh, yeah, because I used to do that. So okay, you know, I can do that. I can, in fact, ride my bike with no handlebars. Although I haven't ridden a bike in about a decade, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe you just can't even ride a bike now. No, I can definitely ride a bike. It's just my legs will explode. So bike rides are so nice. All right, and and I'm not gonna tangent that much anymore. But go to you know the trestle. Yeah, in in Rosendale. Yeah, yeah. So bike, uh, start at the trestle and just bike towards New Paltz direction on that uh pathway. And there's something called the Rail Trail Cafe, where mm-hmm. you'll just be on just in the woods on a trail, and you'll be like, why, why, why do I hear music? And then it'll get louder and louder, and they'll be like live music, and they'll have like a brick, like a like a pizza stone big stone pizza oven and they have like smoothies and like healthy stuff but you can this... only access it via the uh, rail trail why are all the healthy people hiding things from us they're not because i've been there several times <laughs> they're hiding them this from me year. <laughs> they're, they're hiding, hiding them, them from me from you yeah. <laughs> <sighs> all right so edgar harrison again like he's literally at the center of every story yeah. was on the hill with several local college students when they heard the sound of a gunshot from the road. When they approached, they heard the voice of an old man call out, You boys stay out of these woods! The voice had come from a small cluster of trees, which, after being searched, yielded no old men. Jury's still out on rubber suits or projectors. <laughs> okay. Um, things continue to get weird at this point, and I haven't even gotten to the ufologists. Ufologists? the ufologists as a farmer by the name of Freddie Robbins discovered a set of three toed footprints. This quickly followed was, this was quickly followed up by uh, an August 3rd discovery of footprints by the Siddhartha family after hearing a howl from outside. And I've got a little picture of the plaster cast. Okay. Um, interestingly, the man who took the cast Clyde Penrod noted that the foot- footprints were 20 to 25 feet away from anything in mud. And yeah. he wondered how they were made. And I wrote interestingly twice. Uh, this is actually something with a pretty definitive answer, however. Okay. A kid did it. It oh, turns out. They just know. We know. We know. It turns out uh, Gail Siddhartha made the tracks at eight years old on a whim using her heel. And if you look at the picture that I've included in the show notes, not the show notes, the copy. Yeah. Uh, you can see a human heel in the Im- imprints. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Interestingly, though, after this, because the first, the first sighting of the footprint, it's just not described as anything special. Subsequent sightings will now have three toes. Oh, okay. So it's evolving. Yeah, yeah. Um, then, a little bit after this, a group of four boys somehow, once again, including... Two of Edgar's sons <laughs> saw a large creature while fishing at Salt River on August fourth. So uh, my uh, my cork board with pictures and red string, yeah. Uh, there's not really much zigzagging around there. It's all sort of pointing toward in one direction. It's pretty weird. Yeah, it's like it's like a bunch of arrows. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of strange. It looks like a giant asterisk. I don't understand it. Yeah, yeah, or a cat butthole. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, by their accounts and my reading, there's in their story, they saw a bear swimming. Okay. <laughs> now, it should be noted that uh, bears are not necessarily endemic to the region. I will I will admit that uh, because there's a low like berry count in the f- the forest or something along those lines. Okay. But I also want to point out. Animals move and go places that they're not supposed to be all the time. Yeah. It's a thing. And a bear staying in an area for a few weeks in the summer is not really not a bizarre crazy. Th- not, a, not a crazy thing. Could just not be a crazy thing food. at all. I mean, I yeah. see peacocks on occasion. Well, if you're seeing peacocks, that's because you're in Rose. That's because you're in Woodstock. And uh, yes. Woodstock is full of weirdos. Yes, which I say in the which I say, not judgingly. Oh no, it should be. It should be judgingly. I work there. It you can be? judge. Okay, uh, it's full of weirdos. Very full of weirdos. It's full of weirdos, and they the thing is they love being weirdos. So yeah, 
it's it's not a it's not a it's like a badge of honor more than anything else to be totally honest so um at this point i re- i was legitimately like i can't i can't keep doing this this is like at this point it's like 1 a.m while oh, God. writing this story and it's just more of the same so uh capitalism takes effect at this point um and after the story having been ramped up by the hut the headlines and the creature being coined Momo, the Missouri monster, which is actually a pretty clever name. I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it was actually started. It actually started to become leveraged by the local like stores oh, and their okay. advertising campaigns with monster sales. Ah, clever. Okay. Uh, it actually reached a point where even JC Penney's and Gibson were getting in on the advertising. What? Action. Yes. National brands were using Momo in Louisiana, Missouri for their advertising. That's crazy. Okay. Like you in the the picture that I've included, you can see there's a Gibson's uh ad right there that yeah. says we found a monster sale. Oh jeez. Yeah, it's buck wild. So monster tourism additionally was on the rise, but with it danger Marzoff Hill actually needed to be blocked off after two monster hunters killed a bull, mistaking it for the monster. Oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. Uh, however, the most dangerous of all creatures had arrived at this point. The ufologist. <laughs> Go on. Hayden Hughes and Daniel Garcia of the International Unidentified Flying Object Bureau. Uh, I want to also point out that that's not a government thing. The bureau bit, not a government thing, not a government thing, uh, came into town believing that Momo and Bigfoot in general are related to UFOs. There's a whole chapter in the book about UFOs and Bigfoot. Yeah. The whole part about FBI that makes it government is actually the F. <laughs> you yeah. can just be a bureau. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, 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 I don't... I feel like if you're calling yourself a bureau, you're, you're, you're shooting for... Oh, yeah, they're trying to make themselves sound official. Yeah, you're 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 shooting for making yourself as official as possible. Yeah. Um where was I? Okay. It was at this point that Hughes forever changed Momo. Now it has a pumpkin shaped head and glowing orange eyes. Again with the eyes. Yeah, I don't All know. All the time with the eyes. It's a really weird thing. I ufologists are super, super duper like focused on the eyes. Yeah. More than any other group I found. Um, he followed up that Momo could be connected with creatures from outer space, or it might be nothing. Uh, Literally everything. Uh, he, he covers everything. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, 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 when I read that, I was just like, yeah, sure. I, I guess. Yeah. Um, like you're and, not wrong. I mean, if you say, well, it could be. Everything. It could be it could be cancer or nothing. Yeah, that's uh, uh. I, I I was just I was just doing a math problem. Yeah, I mean it could be cancer. What? What? Or nothing. You forgot the or nothing bit. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I've got a picture of him with his his rendition of the monster, um, which I want to point out is now pumpkin shaped, not pumpkin sized. Yeah. Cuz like if you look at the if you look at the advertising campaign they're not really the head shape has changed. He looks like a younger version of the guy from Stranger Things. Oh, the guy that played um, Biff. Biff. His name wasn't Biff. No, no, from uh Back to the Future. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. But man, man, that picture's that picture's a perfect picture for like showing you someone you want to punch in the face oh yes yeah no he's he seems like an intolerable individual oh yeah he seems uh i know like a picture's worth a thousand words and i know that it's not necessarily his normal resting face but man is that face punchable oh yeah um so at this point the momo sightings begun to taper off um, while there are a ton of other reports about Bigfoot and a multitude of people who said they saw X or Y, they mostly fit this mold and are deeply affected by the orange-eyed variant of the creature that was proposed by our 
friendly neighborhood ufologist. Um, if you have any more interest in the stories about Bigfoot from this time period, I super recommend going to our primary source for this episode. Um, because I'm not going to lie. Another hour of me talking about, I saw a humanoid in the woods is not going to be interesting at all for anyone. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, that being said, Momo, while not on the level of Mothman, still gets some fame in the area. There is a song, The Missouri Monster, Momo the Missouri Monster by Bill White. A bowling team, the Zephyr Monsters, who uses Momo as their mascot. And Momo even took over Halloween for a while in the sleepy little town. Oh, it was a very, it was a, it was a popular costume. Yeah. Uh, There was also a period after the event where the town held Momo Days festivals to commemorate their local monster. There's, okay, I mean, there's probably not a lot to do in Missouri. No, not really. Or Missouri? I think they say Missouri. This is, this is northeastern Missouri, too, so. Um, so, and actually, one sec, let me see if, I forgot to put a copy of it in here. But I think I can find a... I, I've listened to the Momo, the Missouri Monster by Bill White before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the name sounds kind of familiar. It does. It's or small. it's too generic, maybe. Maybe it's so generic it's familiar. It's a combination of Bill Engvall and... Um, I can't find the song. Uh, it's a combination of Bill Engvall and... What's his name? Ron White. Ron White. It's, it's their secret baby. It's their baby. They did a fusion dance. Yeah. <laughs> So, if, like, you know, you're a tater salad if, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa! When their, did they combine their jokes? No, that's uh. Here's your sign is billing ball. Ah, here's your tater salad. There you go. That's it. There we go. Nailed it. Boy, am I happy that period of time is over. Oh, I am too. I am so happy. Those... Oh, the run white apparently makes really good tequila. Does he? He like owns a distillery and like is way into like the actual making of tequila and makes like really good tequila apparently which i can believe because if you remember back in the day he always had like a decanter of shit behind him and that's probably just tequila (laughs) he was pretty much constantly drinking yeah every special he he drank like a fish yeah so yeah i'm gonna assume that he was i'm assuming that he he drinks his fair share of tequila I bet. Um, so while we don't exactly know what Momo was, whether it be a bear, a hoax, extraterrestrial, I really don't think it's that, or Bigfoot, um, we do have a somewhat elusive answer from Priscilla Glitner, Gil- Priscilla Giltner, a local high school teacher at the time. She claimed it was a group of three high school boys who fashioned a homemade monster suit they used only sporadically. They made curious noises, implanted the fake footprints, and concocted the putrid smells. Okay. I mean, they probably, you probably don't see it anymore because one, they grew up, but two, they probably like, oh, there's just posses with guns. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all fun and games till the posse shows up. It really is. Yeah. The posse is usually not uh, a good thing. No. You you want to avoid that as much as possible. That's the rookie that's a rookie mistake right there. It is. Um but yeah, so that's really all I got on Momo. Um I should have probably worked in a joke about Momo the mouth, mouse with human strength, but <gasps> Yes, I love Yeah. I I had that thought up front but never said it. Yeah, and yeah. And then I yeah. forgot I had that thought. Yeah, I forgot to work a, a bit in about that, but yeah, there's a mouse with human strength named Momo. Mm-hmm. Probably one of my favorite, like, non-main characters from Hello from the Magic Tavern. There's, yes, there's a lot of podcasts I have to catch back up on. I just I'm have s- hundreds of different, well, not hundred, like 125 different ones I listen to, so I'll, like, yeah. focus in on one for a while, then switch around. I'm, like, so I'm, like, a year and a half behind on on uh, Hello from the Magic Tavern. Yeah. Um, But... That just reminded me, if you haven't listened to the most recent episode of The Dollop at the time oh, of yeah. this recording, I think it's episode 400. Yes. Uh, listen to it and just be really angry. 
It was with Pat Oswald, by the way. I love yeah. Pat Oswald. Also, I already knew a lot of that stuff. I didn't. There. Okay. So I didn't know more of that than I, I. I was upset by how much of that I didn't know already. Yeah. Um, and not only that, but that's only part one. Yeah. And it doesn't even get into any of the war criminal stuff that stuff that he did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So. <laughs> Anywho, um, this is not a this is not a American history podcast. Although when I'm well, doing sorta it, a little bit, it sort of kind of is. I'm not gonna lie, like American folklore. I'm not gonna lie. The yeah. one the copies I have, I'm encroaching on your territory. Uh, there they might be based in the United States. Oh, I'm gonna have to fight you on this one. We'll fight, man. We're gonna fight. Meet All me right. by the flagpole. Podcast's over. We're fighting. Um. Anywho, uh, I guess it's time to plug stuff. So our website is CryptopediaCast.com. Instagram and Twitter are at CryptopediaCast.com. If you want to email us, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a Patreon, which apparently I got a notification in our email. Apparently we've had the Patreon for a year now. Oh, damn. I mean, that makes sense. We're getting close to a year. Yeah, yeah. Well, we passed Uh, year 52, yeah. Let's see. Uh, oh, wait. I think we are... One second. I'm just checking. This is a... This whole, like, Patreon interface is really shitty. Oh, they've got a weird uh, website. Like, I'm trying to understand what I'm looking at. Uh, wait. Okay. Patrons, benefits. Oh, I think we've just got uh, Clay Sinclair now as our... Uh, Jackalope level sponsor. Okay. Um, and I'm thinking, did Marty Von Party? There's this audio poison. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> thanks to Clay. Uh, maybe want to cut some of this down. Uh, thanks to Clay for being a uh, a Jackalope level a supporter. long standing Jackalope. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, the definitely the longest standing jackalope which thanks um we also we have we have podcast stuff on there uh all that good stuff um (laughs) great (laughs) oh jeez i great advertising (laughs) yeah i um (laughs) oh jeez oh i forgot to post injured cold this this is the end of the episode. People don't listen to this. Yeah, no, uh, nobody hears this. Uh, so if you enjoyed the podcast, because because it, it, if people listen to this, they'd rate, review, and subscribe. That's true. Well, sometimes true. I do like a put a little thing at the end. Sometimes, sometimes you'll put a singer. That's true. Yeah, um, this one won't, if, but sometimes yeah. I do. Sometimes, uh, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them our way. Um, and that's uh, that's all I got for the podcast. That was a long one. Yeah. Uh, you could tell that it's an end of the podcast because my brain is starting to melt. <laughs> there is. There's, your face is drooping. John, your face is drooping. <laughs> that's not even. A, that's actually a pretty. That's a serious concern I have because I do have a family history. Of what? Bell's palsy? <laughs> of, of strokes. Oh, strokes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Um, I'm on stuff. On Instagram, I'm at mu2057. Twitter, JF Dunham. Got a website, johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird as I try to remember how to do this podcasting thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>